Hi everyone and welcome back. So in this video we are going to do the dashboard integration with the next CS APIs. So here we are going to build one another service also that is a file service and what file service will do is it will help us to upload the files for restaurant and restaurant menu items. Like in the restaurant you have a logo, banner, thumbnails and all those things. Similarly, we are going to create another service, notification service. So that is going to be a global service, can be used for sending the notifications once uh, the action is done. Let's say user is created successfully, a restaurant has been onboarded, all those things we are going to do. So this is our restaurant landing, landing page, which is showing currently is just uh, some dummy data, I mean uh, dummy content. Now what we are going to do is we are going to integrate it with the APIs. And here we can see that we are making an API call in the restaurant service to our uh, NestJS APIs. NestJS has a restaurant microservice. And here you can see in the page.tsx we have restaurant.map. So where this restaurant data is coming from? This is coming from the APIs, which we are already uh, making a call. And here we can just access these properties, data.name, data.description. And then when you click on read more, we can actually go to the landing page of the restaurant and can see the restaurant menu item of that restaurant. And that will allow you to add uh, new items in the restaurant. So here we can just make the dynamic href also. Here you can see we are making API restaurant. So this is like an external API call we are making from the next JS uh, server side page. I think this is a client side page and here uh, we have the types also which we can see here we are getting all these properties so if i just try to reload and i can see these things right uh, these are the three different restaurant names and i'm able to show them on the the restaurant landing page and here you can see the routing also uh, based on that also now i wanted to fetch the restaurant details based on the id so what do I have is in my routing path, I have ID as a slug folder and then there is a page dot TSX. So what this page will serve? This page will serve uh, when you want to go to the landing page of the restaurant itself. So here we are making a fetch restaurant and we are passing this ID from the slug. So this ID we need to pass. So how can we get the ID? That's an important part. Like uh, when you are creating these page based routings, then how to access this ID. So here we are doing the params and using the router, we are accessing it. So params of type any. And from this params, we can access const ID equal to params. So this ID will give us, uh, okay, what is the restaurant ID you are looking for? And then you can make this API call. Okay, give me the data about the restaurant. So these are like a documentation there. You can check how to access the slug, how to access this uh, folder path, which is a dynamic ID. And here you can see, I'm able to get the ID in my path. And here I'm making API call also, API restaurant and the ID. And I'm getting the data. That is a stringified object, I think. I need to change this to a JSON object. So let's go to our APIs and there I can just tweak the response payload. Here, this is the ID I'm getting and then uh, I'm returning the data. So instead of that, I need to return. I can check how I'm sending the response. I can copy this block and use it somewhere else in this routes. And this is what we need to send. Status code 200, this is dot stringify JSON response. So now if you try to access the APIs, it should be giving me the data and what is this next yes api is doing so in the next yes client side component is so this client side component is making api call to the server side api routes and server side api routes again making a call to the external api right so next yes client side component is making api call which is api restaurant and then id server side api routes is handling those calls so they know what restaurant you are looking for and then from here we are hitting the proxy and we are you can see we are passing the authorization bearer 
and then token we are getting from the next talk session session dot user dot access token that is giving us the authorization header and that is giving us uh, the restaurant data and once the restaurant data is there we can just uh, send the response back and here you can see from the network call uh, so whatever the network call you see from the next year's client to the next year's server side APIs that is happening through the next auth session here we are not passing a bearer token or something because it's all next auth uh, session we are passing and here you can see get restaurant by id and this restaurant object and here you can see we are passing cookies because the, the next is client side and server side uh, session exists through the next auth session cookies and here we got the the data but this data is not in the restaurant we need to change it because restaurant is an object i think because here we are fetching a single restaurant object single restaurant data so now it has become an object and the type is restaurant we can just set the restaurant type and if you just try to see the response that will give us the clear picture that what we are getting when we are hitting this and then we need to find a way to show this properly on the UI because I know uh, the restaurant by ID contains the restaurant menu items uh, based on the categories. So there are multiple categories we have like a brunch, lunch, breakfast, dinner. Based on these each and every category we are just putting all the restaurant menu items inside each and every category as an array. So that we can see the response. Now I just did some cleanup uh, which is just saying okay this is the restaurant name and my VS code is a little slow when it comes to the formatting and showing the correct response so here you can just play with the data because this is a restaurant data and what we why we are building this dashboard admin to see the existing restaurant and restaurant menu items to add the new menu items or new restaurant or update the dish menu items for a particular restaurant so that is administrator stuff you can also access the payments orders and all but these are primary roles you which you will be fulfilling okay onboarding the new restaurant and adding the new uh, dish menu items based on the different categories uploading the logos and all and here i can see uh, the text coming uh, okay so here we are setting the restaurant it's only about that the color is somewhat white so we can change that so here we are getting the restaurant name and the restaurant description from the next is apis and if you see the response response object will give us uh, lots of information about uh, what we are getting so here if we just remove these colors then i can see that okay this is a restaurant landing page that means this page only talks about the restaurant whose id is in the path param okay so you list all the restaurant you go to a particular restaurant by clicking on to this and then here you can fetch the you can show the restaurant menu items so first of all we need to see like uh, what data we are getting I will try to access the restaurant service which actually we are accessing so restaurant by id this i can try and i need to authenticate also for this apis so what can i do i need to pass the access token which i can get from the console log server side console log and i can pass that and then just uh, try to access the restaurant menu items yeah this contains something like this so dish menu items are empty what i will do is i will try to create uh, some dish menu items from the apis so initially we will have some data like so there are some categories uh, we have so paneer masala tikka or something these are the dish menu item names and we can just keep changing the categories and here you can see the object inside the dishes we have a category inside a category there is an array so dishes lunch all the dish menu items for the lunch dishes breakfast all the menu items for the breakfast so this is how it is structured and now 
we need to make our component compatible to this design i mean it's all about inside object we have a key value pair key is the category name and the value is the array of a dish menu items so it's all about how we arrange how we manipulate the data so that we can get all the dish menu items based on the category and we can also iterate and show the category and its dish menu items category and its dish menu items so that's uh, how we can access it and here you can see now i'm getting the breakfast category and uh, i'm getting all the categories which i just populated category dinner lunch so these are the category names inside a dishes object so the next thing we will do is access the dishes iterate on to the dishes object using foreign loop and then uh, put a loop around the array of each and every category this is how we should be able to show the data on the restaurant landing page so here uh, menu items we are just saying key value pair it's another uh, you can say an array of objects so we need to just convert this object into an array of objects where object contains a key and value so what we can do is uh, we need to run a loop onto the dishes object because dishes contains the category is a key so we can run a foreign loop uh const i in uh, dish data and uh, we can just do items items is an array menu item uh, dot push we can have uh, some local variable like items as an array and then once you have all the iterations ready you can just push set this data into the set menu items items dot push key is the category name which is i and the value is the dish data of i so, okay so we got uh, because array is something which we can iterate in gsx of the the react component and we need an, an array objects we can just do a dot but this is an array is something which which we can iterate all the categories and their value categories and their values so now our structure looks something like this uh, we have an array and inside an object we have a key which is category and then there is an a value which is contains an array of uh, all the dish menu items inside that category so key is something else dinner and then there is a value value is an array so this is what we have and we need to play with this uh, json uh, array object into our gsx so that we can iterate and can show all the values on the ui so it's all about accessing and showing it so we'll just remove it uh, this is menu item data so from first iteration we should be able to show the key so we are showing menu item menu item dot map so now inside this we need to have another uh, loop because inside values values is data dot value is again an array so we need to have a nested operation so data dot key and then we have another array which i just put here and it will be a data dot value and it was just formatting and all so that it can look little good and here inside data we need to run a, another loop and this is data dot value So let me fix some code errors. Okay, this is const items. I can just set the type items as an any. Okay, and then uh, in this iteration, so in the JSX we are running a for loop. I can access this uh, data menu item and here you can see we are getting the data category and it's uh, inside category we have okay there are two dish menu items in this so here you can see what we are doing data dot value 
and value dot map data root value dot map and we are just trying to iterate each and every item so what we need to do is we need to just little bit beautify it we just we are using flex either we can use a flex and then we can use a grid for the menu items or we can use flex everywhere flex flex row i think i need to inspect and try to change the styles so i can we can inspect this is a client side rendering because here i'm not uh, this is a purely client side page and once the component is rendered i am making an api call uh, using these use effect hooks so this is the flex row and inside this if i do you know flex column will help in aligning them vertically but i need a flex row for nested categories so i need to change the things a little bit I mean, putting the margin padding and all these things uh, to make it little nice. I'm not going to beautify it a lot because we are not doing doing a uh, lots of CSS stuff here. We are just trying to see if uh, something which which we can work out and that is fine. So here you can see categories are there. I think categories we can arrange horizontally because. Uh, so here we can just use flex row instead of flex column. So if I change this to the flex row, this should be able to align these uh, elements to the horizontally. Or we can have a outer wrapper to these nodes and we can just uh, add a flex there. That will also put the dish menu items in the horizontal row. So here this division class name and here we put a row that will arrange all the items into the horizontal row. Okay, that's nice, uh, better than earlier. And then we can just add some padding and all. So that will arrange the elements a little bit. Uh, so here we can just put a, a margin padding M2 or something like that. So there is a margin for padding we can use P and now we can just put a margin right for these nodes so that they can they will not be adjacent to each other. It's all about uh, choosing the flex layout like justify center we can do but that that will move things to the center. We just want some spacing. So always use uh, or always prefer grid here like you can just set a grid column you want to arrange two items three items in the grid you can just provide a grid gap and uh, all these things so now this is our simple layout we have and here we can just set a justify center we'll align them into center but that's not what we are looking for so i, I will just remove it here we can just provide some gap by putting a margin So we just added some uh, margin M4 to a particular block. So this is how our layout looks like. So further we can actually have another pages like I can have an add in the restaurant let's say that will allow me to add a new restaurant. Similarly I can create a nested pages. Let's say what we are doing here is when you click on to that restaurant I am going to navigate to the dashboard restaurant and add. So there is a different page for it. So when you click on to it, I'm navigating to this path. So this is all about uh, how we are actually providing these different paths. And th this is using the React hook forms that will allow you to fill this form, create a restaurant, hit, hit the APIs, which we already have. And you can also do some file upload stuff. Okay. So what we are doing is we just, I just added these uh, file chooser components once you upload the file because when you are creating a restaurant you will be selecting the, the banner image, uh, header image or thumbnails and all those things. So we, uh, we have these two components custom file selector and image preview. So custom file selector is allowing you to select the uh, PNG and JPEG image and then there is an image preview that will show you the preview of the images which you have uploaded. Okay and these are just a class name these are like a simple input type component and once you have uploaded you can also view 
the uploaded image in just a grid so you know what you are uploading and here we need to integrate our file service because file service will do will handle these uh, file uploads for us you just provide the file and do the upload apis that file service we are going to hit through the proxy path and here you can see if i'm choosing two images and okay these are uh way bigger maybe we need to resize them so these are the two images and when you click on to the save we will also upload them okay so we just need to handle the the size file size the, in the in the preview we are showing them way bigger than uh, that so what we can do is we can just try to resize them so we can use these classes i think we can just use a put a width and height for this okay width has a fill property so we need to remove the fill property and after removing it this is how it looks like i just removed them so these are the two images and just submit it so this is how it is going to work now how the the file upload will work so these are just a components right but file upload should happen on the fly you choose the files you hit the file proxy and uh, get the final url and update the update your local state with the file urls because in the while creating a restaurant we have a, a restaurant banner restaurant thumbnail some images are there so I am just going to provide you just a one way of mechanism to upload a file into the public S3 bucket that this is how you need to upload the file and after that you will get a URL public URL of that image you can set that public URL image uh, in the form so when you are submitting it you will send that uh, URL of uh, thumbnail or the banner image to the APIs and that's a public URL that's going to be public forever Otherwise, there is another way is let's say you are uploading some private content. Here it's public because the, the law, the business is the, that logo and thumbnail should be public. You can actually create, generate a signed URL from the APIs and then do the put from the local. From your React component, you can hit a put on that signed URL uh, for your image. That's another. That's when your bucket is private uh, and uh, I mean, you do not want to make the content public okay you can upload in any way you can just make an api which is just doing a put call and then you are using the aws s3 uh, apis to upload anything so that that can do any stuff that can upload any file now, another thing is how to see the content when uh, the bucket is private so you need to generate a signed url from the back end that signed URL is something which you can show on the front end uh, temporarily because that has an expiry. It's not a public URL. After some time, when you try to hit that URL on the browser, it will say you access denied or something. Okay. Currently, these thumbnail URLs and all are public. So, we will create a public bucket and we will integrate that with the file proxy service. I mean, file service that is going to help you to upload any image files and all. So let's uh, see that in the next video.